Happy New Year, brother and sister. It's very good to be back to worship our God together. Do you have a habit of making New Year resolution? I read something like this. I like it very much. I resolved to fix my leaky faucet. I resolved to fix my neighbor's porch. I resolved to fix my eyes on Jesus. So we will fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, and what is not seen is eternal. I resolved to run on my treadmill, run two miles a day, run a marathon. But most important, I resolved to run the race marked out for me. Let us throw off everything that hinder at the sin that easily entangle us, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. I resolved to take violin lesson, and I resolved to take a vacation. I resolved to take an art class, but most important. I resolve to take up my cross daily. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny ourselves and take up our course to follow Jesus. So this year, I encourage all brothers and sisters to resolve to do all we can do for the glory of God. I invite you to start the Bible reading every day and share it in your own group and do our best to build up each other spiritually and build up the kingdom of God. Amen. As we are coming together to worship our God, let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundance grace of God. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people. With all who come to the manger, rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Everyone, um, so let's kick off our new year by worshiping God and we'll rise together where you are. Thank you. 
the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you Let us pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this morning as we come to worship you. We give you praise for you are worthy to be praised. We give you thanks for giving your Son, Jesus Christ, to us that we may all come to you, that we may all receive your salvation. Father, as we're worshiping today, may your grace, may your blessings be with each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is what the Lord says. Sing with joy for Jacob. Shout for the foremost of the nations. Make your praise heard and say, O Lord, save your people. The remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the end of the earth. Among them will be bland and the lamb Expected mother and the woman in labor, a great throw will return. They will come with weeping. They will pray as I bring them back. I will lead them beside the streams of water on a level path where they will not stumble because I'm Israel's father and Ephraim is my firstborn son. 
Hear the word of the Lord, all nations. Proclaim at a distance cast land. He who scattered Israel will gather them and will watch over the, his flag and the like a shepherd. For the Lord will ransom Jacob and redeem them from the head of those stronger than them. They will come and shout for joy on the heights of Zion. They will rejoice in the bounty of the Lord, the green, the new wine, and the oil, the young of the flocks and the herd. They will like a well-watered garden, and the will thrown no more. They will, the young woman will dance and be glad, young men and the old as well. I will turn their mourning into gladness. I will give them comfort and joy instead of sorrow. I will satisfy the priest with abundance, and my people will be filled with my bounty, declares the Lord. This is the word of God. The second lecture reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he, pre he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him, we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory and you also, who were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit, guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Today's Gospel is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 9 to 18. The true light that gave light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, and the world did not recognize him, he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of a natural de descent, nor of human decision, or her husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John, testifying concerning him, he cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who come after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and the only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. 
Do you like a good mystery novel, or the twist and the turn of a well-crafted plot? You know the clue hidden in the smallest detail, and the challenge of putting together the pieces of an intricate puzzle. Sometimes an author leaves a loose end, and it is like an end of the session of a te television series, to be continued. Maybe this is、uh, something in us that we hunger for an unanswer unanswerable questions. And the unsolvable riddle. It is good to remind now and then that we don't know everything. It is simply out of our comprehension. You know, in my home, this day for a few months already, I have four kids in my household now, and they take turn to ask questions at the dinner table. It may interrupt them to finish the meal, and the adult may have a hard time to answer all those questions. Pastor David always be the one who explain the answer to the kids, but at one point he explained it. It is good to ask questions, and there are questions which are very constructive. It's a good process to learn, but at sometimes we need to realize. There are some questions we do not have an answer, but just simply accept it based on the trust of the one who make those remark. They are mysteries. We can only use faith to accept it and try to comprehend what is revealed to us. But mystery itself can also be very unsettling to us. We can easily be frustrated when the clues are ambiguous, and at the end of the first century, the Christians in and around Ephesus were looking for answer, and things had not turned out exactly the way they would expected them to. And most of Jesus' original twelve disciples had died, and the temple in Jerusalem had been destroyed. And Jew Jewish Christians had scattered throughout the Roman Empire. Jesus had not returned as promptly as this Christian had hoped, and some of them were beginning to wonder if they had missed an important clue. And it was in this context that John wrote this gospel, the Gospel of John, and he offered a few keys to unlock this mystery. He began his gospel account with familiar words, a vital detail in the story they had been telling each other for centuries and centuries. In the beginning, but he turned the creation story in an unexpected direction. In these few short verses, John presented the mystery of the word made flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made through Him. Without Him, was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of the people. Those words are very familiar with them. Let's pick up the story beginning in verse nine, the first chapter. The urgent question bothering those. Christians was a simple one. I think maybe you at some point had this question too. Was it true that Jesus was God, or had they been believing a lie all these years? John the Baptist had sent disciples to ask Jesus a, a similar question: Are you the one we have been expecting, or should we look for another? But when John the Baptist's disciple had asked those questions, they are asked it with a glimpse of hope. And now, decades later, the question persists. The first-century Christians were beginning to admit their doubt and fear. Isn't it like our experience in 2020? We are wondering, where is the hope for the never-ending social distancing and mask wearing? What is the purpose of what you are doing right now? 
How do we find motivation to continue our battle, continue on what we believe? How do we find strength in facing the uncertainty, the loss of our loved one, the loss of our security, and the loss of our normal life? How do we find help from God and go through this together as people of God? You know, in Chinese congregation, they, their devotion, they, they are committed to do the devotion together on the book of Joshua. At the very beginning of the first chapter, a very strong message to us, meditate his words day and night and be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. And for the English congregations, they committed to do the new versions devotion together. A very strong message that coincidentally matching each other. Be hopeful. And telling us all those in all those challenge and and difficulties, all those uncertainty, all those days that lack of motivation, fear and doubt. God asks us to be strong and courageous and to keep us all together hopeful. Isn't it good that our congregation, both congregations, committed to, to do the devotion together so we can discern God's voice together? John here confronts this fear immediately by invoking the creation story from Genesis and reminding his reader the role Christ had in that story. And if that isn't enough to convince the first century skeptic, John called on the witness on the John the Baptist, whom they respect, to announce he is the one who come after me, yet rank before me. John wants to open our hearts to accept the truth that Jesus take on human flesh, become one of us, and invite us into the reality of God with us. He wants to make this truth and imprint it in our hearts to accept this truth. And John tells us this truth in that time was rejected by many, by his own people. He came into the world that had been created through him, and that would, the world did not recognize him. We humans reject God's goodness just as Israelite people stay away from God along the history. And throughout history, the people of God have repeatedly turned away from God to pursue their own desire. Even when God came down to find us, the very people who had been longing for God's redemption that was standing right in front of him. Though many failed to recognize him as the Son of God, some accepted him. And all those who receive him were given power to become children of God, not by human act or intention, but born of God. We do not deserve it, but totally because of his grace. You know, the Greek word here refer the power as the power of choice. The liberty of doing as one chooses. It is the power given by God, given by God's permission to freely enter into God's family. Nothing is more precious than being able to call the children of God. This is how we experience God's grace. You know, my family have a lot of members in my household. Every now and then, if we accept new people in our household, we are giving them the, the memory coke, the coke that opened our door, and freely given their permission to enter and go out my household. This is the trust, the love for those people. I think it's the same. God empower us and give us that permission to be called children of God 
This is the grace from God tells us that He loves us so much. And verse 16 says, Out of His fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. And any children of God can easily tell you story about how God bestowed His grace like gifts after gift, gift after gift. And just think about how God finds you. How God guides you and gives you a verse from the, the Bible and to remind you the thing that he had told you before. How God grants you the peace in the storm by a prayer. Kneel down in your prayer in front of our God. How God lets you experience the love of God through the fellowship with brother and sister. And how God delivers you from temptations and all kinds of dangers. When we recall all those memories, it's like gifts after gifts. I think it is delightful to see children in the Christmas time, they are unwrapping the Christmas gifts one after another, and they are so happy to receive one gift after another. But when you ask the kids, do you remember who gives you the gifts? They may be so happy to unwrap the gift, but they forget who gave them the gift. We need to recognize who gave those gifts after gifts in our life, in the, in the moments of life. And verse 17 said, for the, law, for the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus. And in the message version, it's very interesting saying, we got the basics from Moses, but the grace and truth came through Jesus Christ only. We only got the basic, the basic thing from the world, from the law of Moses. But the, the real thing, the real thing that we need deep down in our hearts that fully, truly satisfies our, us is only from the truth and the grace from Jesus Christ. It is like and as an adult, in the Christmas time, we have to admit that when you grow older, it is harder to get a gift or give a gift that you truly need it and love it. But deep down in your heart, we got to trust this. What we truly need, what it truly satisfies, is from the grace and the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ. It echoes the theme verses from the book of John. Chapter 20, 31. It summarized the whole book. John writes, But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Life. What is the life we pursued? We pursued the life that we think it will make us happy. You know, in the Christmas time, I saw a movie. It, uh, the movie is a cartoon movie. It's called Soul. And there is a description of a lost soul. As one pursues something that he or she think would make life happy. But gradually, one loses touch of, of the life because continuously pursuing and, and become like a thing that blindfold them. So, we think something makes us happy, but in return, we hold it so tight and won't let it go. And it gradually becomes a trap to us. And gradually, we lose touch with the most important thing in life, which is the grace and truth in life. I pray that all of us by believing, you may have life in his name. Amen. So as we reflect back on um, the sermon that was preached, I invite you to stand and we'll sing this together.
Lord, we come here before you. We first ask that you will help us, remind us that we are your children. Forgive us if we didn't remember that precious grace you have given us. Help us to remember to live out as your children that you call us to be. Lord, remind us again that you are our Father. You're the faithful one. You're the merciful one. Lord, in this Christmas season, help us to remember that you are real. You are the Emmanuel. You came for us. And you are with us right now. Open our eyes so we recognize you in our life, that you are with us all along. Lord, help us to believe in you, to trust that you have an abundant life for us. Help us to believe that and help us to live it out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we continue to pray for the world and for others. Close our eyes and pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, during 2020, when our world fell apart and people grew away from one another, please give us hunger for your word and prepare our hearts against worldly distractions so we can focus on you and help us to devote our time to you to learn your words and time to pray before you. Help us to think about you during our busy times and not just when we need you the most. May the words we read and the stories we learn about you encourage us to incorporate more of your ways into our daily lives. For it is said that all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Second Timothy verse three, chapter three, verse 16. Let us not forget that those whose health is compromised due to the coronavirus and other health complications. And we especially pray for the safety of elderly folks and Pastor David. May you watch over them and give them the strong health they need. We also pray for the ones who suffer from the economic downturn and also frontline workers who are constantly serving our communities day in and day out. May you cast your loving hands over them all and bless them with the ability and mentality to get by these tough times. And with every obstacle we face, we learn time after time that we can get by them with your leadership and help us not to forget that with the challenges that we're dealing with, with you, we can get through them. Thank you, Lord. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us continue the prayer together and pray as Je with the prayer that as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now we'll profess our faith together by using the song, I Believe.
In his letter to the Corinthians, Paul says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not, reluct re not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Let us offer our gift with a cheerful heart. Let us pray. Gracious God, you came to us as one unknown, bringing joy and salvation to the earth. Nourish us at your banquet table, that with all who welcome your birth, we may proclaim your peace, revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us receive God's blessings by faith together. Grace from God's own heart, peace from the child in the manger, and strength from the spirit of life be blessing for you today and forever. Amen. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Peace and serve the Lord.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to partake this communion. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God, who is faithful and just, and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, words, and deed, and by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole hearts. We have not loved one another in deed and truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. With joy, I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, and forgive us all our sin and grant you newness of Christ in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let's share in peace with one another. I encourage you to text a word of blessings in your group. We give you thanks, eternal God. 
you are the creator and ruler of this universe. Through Christ's death and glorious resurrection, you have opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you with the whole church on earth and all the hosts of heaven. Holy God, mighty God, you are our gracious Father. Endless is your mercy and eternal is your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Through Abraham and Sarah, you promised to bless all nations. You rescued Israel, your chosen people. Through the prophet, you renew your promise. And at the end of the age, you send your son, who is words and deeds, and proclaim your kingdom, and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. We give you thanks for the life you're giving us and call us children of God. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. You do this in the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of all this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us and believing the witness of his resurrection. And we await his coming in power to share with us the great and the promised feast. So now we pray your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord, and of his resurrection, that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. The gift of God for the people of God. Now at home and at church, we can eat the bread and drink the cup. Let's pray to give thanks to our God. Almighty God, you provide a true bread from heaven, your Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may fill it with the power of his endless life now and forever. Amen. 